Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pierce coming to you from Baltimore. A federal court in Washington, D.C. has sentenced a former Blackwater security guard to life in prison. Three others were sentenced to 30 years for their role in a 2007 shooting that killed 14 Iraqi civilians in Baghdad, including three children. Nicholas Slatton received a life sentence for first-degree murder, while Dustin Hurd, Evan Liberty, and Paul Slough were sentenced for charges including manslaughter. The ex-guards were convicted in October after a long legal fight over the deadly attack at a crowded Nysore traffic circle in downtown Baghdad. U.S. District Judge Royce Lambert announced the sentences after a day-long hearing at which defense lawyers had argued for leniency and prosecutors asked that those sentences be minimums mandatory under the law be even harsher. Now joining me to discuss all of this is Rhys Ehrlich. He is best-selling book author and freelance journalist who writes regularly for The Global Post, Vice News, and NPR. His latest book is Inside Syria, the backstory of their civil war and what the world can expect. Thank you so much for joining us, Rhys. Thanks for having me. Rhys, tell us about the significance of this case and why these uh, prosecutions are important. Well, this is the most uh, significant, the uh, most serious of a series of atrocities carried out by both the U.S. military and military contractors in Iraq. And frankly, under the Bush administration, there was no intention to actually prosecute these guys. Uh, one of the charges uh, expired. Uh, um, they allowed the statute of limitations to run. Uh, the Obama administration Justice Department had to refile a murder charge as a result. Uh, it was botched, and I think intentionally so, uh, under the Bush administration, because they didn't want the details coming out of what the U.S. had done. And this is really the first time that uh, there's been a conviction and uh, heavy sentencing for this kind of activity. And uh, one of the uh, items being disputed right now is whether this case actually um, should be prosecuted because the matter of oversight, uh, transparency and accountability is still not clear in terms of the responsibility uh, of the United States in terms of these right. um, Blackwater type contractors that are on the ground. There's some dispute as to whether they can be tried in American courts. Of course, they they can't be tried in Iraqi court, which means uh, effectively there's nothing they can do anything they want, carry out murder, mayhem, and never be held responsible for it. You know, a question that I always wondered about and I've often been asked is, why would the administration want to hire contractors when they cost so much more money uh, and are uh, so much... Uh, more trouble to deal with than uh, the U.S. military. I mean, they pay three, four, five times the salaries to these contractors that they do to the ordinary troops. Well, one of the reasons is because they're not responsible to anybody. If they uh, carry out U.S. policy by massacring people, uh, the uh, argument then comes up, well, they're not doing it on U.S. soil, so they can't be prosecuted here. Uh, whereas the U.S. military who engage in similar acti activities, at least in theory, they could be uh, held responsible to a military court. So I think what we're seeing here is a conscious effort by uh, certainly the last administration and to some extent the current administration to make sure that uh, these kinds of uh, activities can be carried out without uh, be people being held responsible. And uh, what does this also tell us about these convictions are really the guards that were responsible, but the Blackwater uh, leadership and, uh, you know, head, head of the corporation is really getting off scot-free here. Yeah, not only the head of Eric Prince, the head of Blackwater, but the U.S. Uh, uh, military officials who, uh, with a wink and a nod, condone such activities. Uh, it's not unique. Uh, remember Abu Ghraib, the uh, infamous uh, torture uh, photos that came out some years back? Uh, Seymour Hersh and CBS and others revealed them. Well, the only people who were ever held responsible for that were extremely low-level guards in the prison. The people, including the CIA, who designed the torture programs 
the cabinet members in the Bush administration who approved the torture methods uh, were never held responsible, let alone put on trial. And uh, is this an issue that came up in the recent report on uh, torture? Uh, yes, this and similar incidences were cited. You're talking about the U.S. Senate report? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, remember that, that made quite a lot of news for about a week uh, and then faded from uh, the news cycle, unfortunately. Uh, but it's always interesting when high-level reports, whether from in this case from the U.S. Senate or occasionally uh, um, investigative uh, reports uh, are uh, issued, um, you know, the United States are the good guys. Uh, therefore, we don't torture. Therefore, we don't do or when these things happen. It's uh, uh, an anomaly. It's uh, the uh, odd apple. That's the rogue uh, soldier, that sort of thing. But in fact, when you look at it, and the U.S. Senate report confirms that, this is systematic. These kind of um, attacks on civilians were carried out throughout Iraq uh, and indeed um, are carrying out today with the U.S. bombing in Iraq and Syria. Hi, um, uh, It goes on. Um, do we know uh, the level of engagement by contractors in the current fight against ISIS? Well, to my knowledge, and uh, remember, this is still uh, clouded in secrecy. Uh, the, bomb, the aerial war is being carried out by the Air Force and the other U.S. military forces. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, special ops people and CIA on the ground uh, coordinating with whatever uh, Peshmerga, you know, Kurdish Peshmerga or others that they can find. To my knowledge, the uh, uh, contractors are in Baghdad uh, to some extent still carrying out uh, guard duties uh, for State Department officials and so on. Uh, but uh, I simply don't know if they're engaged in on-the-ground fighting, as I suspect some other U.S. military forces are. Right. Reese Ehrlich, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.